Hi, friends. My name's host Eric. Her name's Rachel. We're here tonight live streaming on Talking with Fence People, the internet's only television program. Yeah. Um, tonight we ask, what color is your Aja? Now, for those of you who are not familiar, in the book series, The Wheel of Time, the Aes Sedai are divided into various Ajas. There are seven of them. The colors are, well, actually there's eight, okay. <laughs> there's white, yellow, green, blue, red, gray, brown. Those are the main seven. And then the evil Aja, black, the black Aja. Oh, yeah, black. Right. They're the ones who serve the dark one. I'm surprised there's no purple. Mm, no, <laughs> no purple. So each of these Ajas has, it's like, which Aja the uh, the Aes Sedai um, join or be a part of, it depends on what their interests are, I guess you could say. Uh, so, for example, the brown Aja is is the Aja of study, um, scholarship, uh, librarians, libraries, stuff like that. You mm -hmm. know, uh, they're famous for being distracted by their pet. Hi, Winston's mom. Hi, Winston's mom. Um, I think of of the brown Ajas comprising mostly, I guess, INTPs, maybe some INFPs. They're very not dewy. Ah, they're more steady, not dewy. They're not dewy. They're more steady. Bookish, bookish. Yeah. The gray Aja is the Aja that is known for um, negotiations. And mediation. So anytime there's a contract to be negotiated or anytime there's a tricky um, a tricky thing, like political thing between nations or whatever, the gray Aja is sent out to do mm. with them. <laughs> you definitely need a quill. In fact, you should only allow yourself to write with a quill and a jar of ink old school style. Did you know that in India, because I was looking up about peacock feathers after I found them, that in India, it's like considered like extremely, like they dip peacock feathers in ink and it's like a royal thing to, to like to write, write with. with. The, yeah. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> so maybe get yourself a fancy feathered pen. Definitely organize your writing desk first. Your jewelry desk is yeah. boring. I don't know. It's up to you. What's bothering you more? Your writing desk or your jewelry? It's a very INFJ answer. I like my answer better. Mm -hmm. Go with his. Aja is a Steely Dan album. Oh, but it's it also, is. It's also the name of the subcategories of uh, female magic users in the series Wheel of Time. But Aja is also um, pronounced Asia, isn't it? Yeah, the Steely Dan album is pronounced uh, Asia. Yeah, that's what I thought, because my dad used to talk about, he'd come home from a concert and he'd be like, oh, they played it, the whole thing of Asia. And I'm like, oh, well, that's cool. I never heard it before. <laughs> but but in, the sure book, in the book, it's pronounced Aja. Yes. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, so brown is the INTPs, Mostly, INFPs. Yeah, INTPs, INFPs are brown, Aja. And they're the ones who, it's the scholarship, Aja, that doesn't like to do things, but to, to deliberate further. They can get good grades. Now, the gray Aja is the mediation Aja. So, um, the thing is... Gray, okay. You might call that an NFJ Aja, but I think they're more SFJ. Yep. Um, yeah. Hi, B Bay. Uh, hey, B Bay. And then you've got your white Aja, which is, um, which is also is the other half of INTPs plus INTJs, I'd say. 
It's the ones who, who think reason and uh, empirics are are highly important. I mean, I guess you could also put your ESTPs maybe in the white Aja. Maybe ENTPs, ESTPs are better suited for white Aja. I forgot. I wasn't listening while you were... The white Aja is the logic Aja. Oh, so E... But, but look, the thing is, the brown Aja is the knowledge Aja. So you could say that they're they're the SI knowledge Aja. You could actually say that brown Aja is your ISFJs, ISFJs. and ISTJs. ISFJs, like, I get that. Because you can go back to... They like history and stuff. Like you can go back to them for like stories, and they like to stay inside a lot, a lot. Now, so you got your white aja, which is logic. Your gray aja is mediation. Your brown aja is scholarship. Okay, so and your uh, blue aja is um, like ni singular. Uh, singular quest like uh well you know having having a, a clear cause that's the word I'm looking for. Ah oh, I like that. Good uh, afternooning into here. I would suggest that the NFJs are most likely to be found in the blue aja. Moraine for example the character Moraine is an INFJ she's blue aja. The green aja is more likely to be your um, SFPs, they call themselves the Battle Aja, mm. and they uh, they believe in a lot of action. And uh, so SFPs, I would say SFPs plus maybe some STPs in there. Yeah, as well. be, yeah. Um, but you know, it's it's not always the case that the characters are in the right Aja. <laughs> you know, so it's <laughs> like, um. Egwene sees herself as green Aja, ah. and Elaine sees herself as green Aja. Yeah, I heard but her say that. They're both NI types. So that's, it's like, they really shouldn't be, they should really not be in the green Aja, but they want to be in the battle Aja, you know. Um, but, hmm, that's interesting. The, the yellow Aja is an FI Aja. That's the healing Aja. Ah. And the caregiving Aja. So if you're okay. yellow, then you care a lot about people and uh, you heal them. And and ENFP could be there. Yeah, well, I think it's your, your uh, ISFP, probably, your um, INFPs, your ISFJs ENFPs. could be there. ISFJs, yeah. yeah. What is an Aja? I'm not supposed to say explanation. So an Aja is a, in this book I'm reading, they divide these this tower of magic women into seven colored Ajas. And it goes like this. Brown is scholarship. White is logic. Um, blue is a uh, cause or, or a singular path or whatever. Yellow is healing. Um, gray is logic. Brown is scholarship. White, no, gray is mediation, brown is scholarship, white is logic, yellow is healing, blue is cause. Uh, green? Green is the battle Aja. They're the and fighting Aja. Black. And, well, but, oh, there's also yellow. Oh. Which is the healing Aja. Did oh, I yeah, say that one? No, Aja. red. Red is the one I didn't say. Oh, yet. red. Red is the uh, vengeance Aja. Okay, so it's like oh, they're right. also they're the um, third wave third wave feminist Aja. They mm -hmm. they hate men and they try to. Oh my gosh! Wow. The blue one is like an ni nise kind of Aja, where it's uh, you have a singular path and you you understand what's most important, basically. So in that regard, it's it's the most INFJ of all the Ajas is the blue Aja. And blue is, I was thinking about how blue is one of my favorite colors. Like, growing up, my favorite color was hot pink. And, like, to this day, hot pink still, like, holds a, as you can see, a, a part of my heart. But um, as I grew up to be, like, maybe, like, my... 
jeans. I just like blue, like blue jeans. I see your picture. I keep it with your letter. Oh. I love that song. It sure looks good on you. Yeah. And when you smile for a camera, I know I love it better. Oh, I love that line. Hey, it would look right on you. It's your favorite foreign movie. It was it's such a good song. It is. I got so many good that. songs. How did that pop in your head? I don't know. Chris Chapman put the lyrics up there. Oh, thanks. He put this thing. I see your picture. I keep it with your letter. Thank oh, you, Chris Chapman. Thanks. It's such a good song. And it's a good summer song, too. Da, 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 da. It looks good on you. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. I like Steely Dan a lot. You know, um, it's Steely Dan. And it's a band that I, if if you don't like Steely Dan, this is what I think. You probably have good taste in music and haven't quite gotten yet to understanding why Steely Dan's good, but presume they must be shitty because of all the ways in which they are that, shitty. That, that, that. Okay. <laughs> wasn't that um, YouTube that I showed you like the perfect example of like their rap? Uh, remember? I don't the, remember. Okay. So when we were in Hawaii, I showed him a video of a comedian. Oh shit. What's his name? Oh, you mean like the guy who who told a joke about having a younger girlfriend and going to a concert or something? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I, I vaguely remember that. Having yeah, I guess about having a younger girlfriend. I don't know his I forget his name. He's very like Irish Catholic guy and he's friends with someone on SNL and um yeah, he's a big fan of. Oh yeah, yeah, Steve I remember Dan. what you show. I now yeah. I know what you're talking about. And like. And how? Okay, but the, but yeah. The wife was like, oh, like it's like old time music, like jazzy, jazz pop, jazz pop. That's what you call it. And like the comedian was like, you just don't know. But anyway, um, they went to the show and like no one was moving around, and like. They got everyone up on their feet dancing to do well, dance. The thing is, it's not it's not particularly danceable music. No, it's, it's not. not, it's not <laughs> it doesn't make you dance really. But the thing is, it's the only example of its kind of music that's good. All yeah, other examples is, of that kind of music are terrible. <laughs> Absolutely fucking terrible. Yeah. So if you think Steely Dan must be terrible, they do have some terrible stuff too. Yeah, they do. So um, they do. They really fucking do because here's here's how I know of Steely Dan. I know of Steely Dan because of my dad, and my dad used to leave. Um, first of all, I've seen like cover bands of theirs called Forty Five RPM. Yes, yeah, Running Fox, Go ahead. and they're really good. Um, they sound exactly like Steely Dan, so like I got a good taste of what like they were like, what kind of like band they were like. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not one of their better songs, Running Fox. I don't. I, I, I'm I not like that song because I, that song I was introduced to. It was on the radio. Like that's the yeah. one that's actually on the radio. But but look, they got a lot of stuff that's yeah. that's on the radio, and they've got a lot of stuff that's better than that. So yes, yes, I agree it's like with you. you know, in my my best that best TV Dan playlist, that would not make a playlist. But that that song that we were just singing would have made that. Yeah, for sure. That that I love that song. But anyway, so um, I know because my dad and um my mom likes them too and um so yeah my dad had like steely dan cds in the car that we shared and i would listen to the cds and some of them mom, i was like this fucking is not all he makes it out to be like some of their stuff is really good and then some of it is really fucking shit like yeah. i had to turn it off it's true absolutely What's the most popular song? Well, one of their best songs is Babylon Sisters. Yeah. But they've got a lot of good songs. You know, and 
and one of the great songs of I See the Dan that people don't know is by See the Dan because it's the only song they have by with a different singer is um it's called uh Dirty Work. Yeah, that's a good song. You might be familiar with it, but you probably yeah, don't that, know it's by C D Dan. Right. And it, it goes uh Times are hard. I forgot to pay the fee. And to find yourself somebody who will do the job for free. I'm a fool to do your dirty work. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to do your dirty work no more. Yeah. That's a good one. Moody Blues is terrible. Okay. See, that's an example. This is this is what I'm talking about. So you might very well correctly put, yeah, but it's, it's, it's the... It's the pinnacle. It's the it's the platonic Fabulous form of mixing. It's the platonic yeah, form of a well mixed, well mastered yeah, song. You know. Yeah, it is. It but is. the Moody, Moody yeah. Blues is exactly an example of a band that is like Steely Dan. That's terrible. What song do they have? They're all terrible. I, <laughs> I, I don't know. They've got like you know, walk across with the horse with no name. You know that song? And that Moody Blues? No, that's on the Moody Blues. It's that, America. That band is also terrible. What does Moody Blues say? <laughs> Sultans of Swing. Sultans of Swing. That's them? Yeah, it's terrible. Are you song. sure? I'm pretty sure. No, Sultans of Swing are um, the same guys who do... Dire Straits? So, yeah, Dire Straits. I hate that song. I love them, though. I like, the, I I like, like some them. Dire Straits yeah, songs. Okay, so what's Moody Blues? Give me, I know a Moody Blues song is terrible. Well, I can't remember what it's called. Yeah, I don't know any Moody what's Blues. The most My famous? dad likes Moody Blues. I know, I do know. Just tell me what it is. What's the <laughs> famous song called again? It's terrible. <laughs> we got a couple of famous songs, and they're both terrible. <laughs> I, 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 I probably will agree with you. Knights in White Satin. Oh, what's that? Oh, Knights in White Satin. Do 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 do. No, I don't know. Do 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 Fucking terrible. I don't know it. Oh. I don't know it. Tuesday afternoon? I don't know. I'm not sure I know Tuesday afternoon. No, Nights of White Satin is just, it makes me want to vomit blood. <laughs> this is Eric's <laughs> expression. This is Eric expressing, expressing <laughs> an opinion. <laughs> oh, I, I don't awful. know what that is. You know what's you know equivalent to Nights of White Satin is in a in the Gata de Vida. That's another song that's like it, 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 the same kind of awful as Nights and White Satin. No in the Gata de Vida, baby. Oh, stop it. Ew! Ew! <laughs> oh, I hate that song. Fuck that shit. <laughs> yeah. Who put me through that? Um, Sorry. Hey, now, now. Now, look, here's a song that you can almost oh like. It, it's like. I, I half like it and half hate it. Saturday in, in the park. park. I think it was the 4th of July. July. That's Chicago. Because that, that's it's another, mom, it's an equivalent sort of thing. Mom right? band. Yeah, it's a Chicago mom band. Chicago is a mom band. Uh, it is. Now that, that one, I can't tell if it's awful Saturday. or okay. It's one in of the two. In the park. I think it was the 4th of July. Do, do, do. I like, um, if you leave me now, you take away the big part of me. Funny horse moment, because I think of them as Ooh, no, as the baby, quintessential I, example of INTP killing it, you know? If any Ooh. INTP is going to kill it. What? It would be Donald Fagan. Yeah, hell yeah. I mean, and he's music? definitely, yeah, well, he's definitely an INTP, and he's doing INTP shit, but he's still pulling it off, yeah. which being countervalued NI is difficult for INTPs well, to do. Can I just say that? Here's the best Dan here, playlist. Here's what I actually was thinking today, and I want to see what you have to say about it. Um, I think that INFP and INTPs, are really brought into music. They like 
um, help them with the music the best. Like, I think INFJs help INFPs and INTPs. And music. ENTPs, even. ENTPs. You, sure. INFJs help me a lot. Led Zeppelin's great. If you met somebody, someone who said they never had experienced depression, what would you, would you, from that knowledge, rule out certain types or hone out certain types? Most likely ESTP or ENTP. Yeah. I used to say that. I eventually realized that some of my um, periods of despondency qualified as depression. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't really recognized them as such. I just thought they were like, you know, the world sucked for a while. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what it is, though. That is it. Yeah, I am obsessed you know? with those books. I don't block, block. I've been listening. To, I can't stop listening to them. I, I'm almost. I'm on. What book am I on? Thirteen. No, I don't even know. It's. I'm it's on, honestly stunning. I'm on book thirteen. I'm about halfway, wow. a little more through halfway through book books thirteen. Total. Wow, good for you, Bay. Um, Thank you for spelling What's an example difference Obama. between NI and <laughs> NE? Well, uh, I mean, NE it, it, is the thing that makes me want to make a video. Like, okay, look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to make a video about NI, let's say. NE is the thing that makes me go, okay, well, first I need to explain the fields. And then I really need to explain what actually, you know, go back a little further than that. <laughs> I really need to explain what an object of analysis is versus an example of analysis, oh because that's really the kind of concrete error people are making here. So before I start talking about NI, whereas NI says, no, you're not talking about NI. You're explaining a bunch of shit. Right? <laughs> you know what you were explaining? A Venn diagram right there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the thing is that, when I want to, if you were to ask me a question, what's the single biggest mistake people make in understanding cognitive functions? I would say mistaking an object of analysis for an example of analysis. I mean, conflating the two, Could getting you? them mixed up. And I will, yes, I'll give you some example. So um, when I'm talking about what is NI, I'm making introverted intuition an object of analysis. If I'm saying this, this cognitive, the way that you just interacted with this prompt indicates introverted intuition, then I, that's an example of using analysis. I'm analyzing somebody's behavior and attributing to it the status of introverted intuition. If I'm talking about what introverted intuition is, then it's an object of analysis. In other words, I'm not talking then anymore about a process that somebody's doing. I'm talking about an idea of a process that I can analyze and say things about. Cheers. Glad to hear we were in high spirits, horse one boy. Uh, you know, my spirits have been low. I'm not going to lie. They've been a little bit low lately. I've been engaged in what I would deem stubborn escapism, um, which means I don't want to deal with anything and I just want to uh, smoke bowls and listen to my listen to my books mm -hmm. and uh, meow, 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 you know. So it's something I'm subject to logically explaining versus intuitively understanding your NI example. No, it's really it's not a matter of whether you're using something as a tool or whether you're talking about the tool. For example, a hammer. I can either hammer with it. Or I can explain what it is, right? If if you, if I say, oh, you're hammering because you're going like this, then I'm doing analysis of your behavior. I'm saying what you're doing is called hammering. But if I'm talking about a hammer, like this is your hammer and it has these attributes and stuff, then I'm treating the hammer as an object of analysis. The thing is... Uh, for cognitive functions, we need to remember that they're manners of attention. And so when we talk about them as objects of analysis, what is NI? Well, NI is a process, it is a term we use to describe a manner, a, a way that people pay attention, okay? But we get that mixed up with um, a bunch of reification fallacies by saying things like, NI does this, or SI does that, or, or, you know, NI means this, or this is an NI behavior, or whatever, we're, we're 
forgetting, we're moving away from the reality that this is always a manner of attention expressed by an individual human being about something or, and, and so then once, once we understand, okay, now if we're going to talk about it as an object of analysis, then, then what are we talking about? Well, we're talking about manners of attention that, that have a relationship with information. So, you know, interpreted intuition is a receive function, I say, which means you don't have to deliberate it out. There's no, there's no process. There's no calculations. It's just, yeah, you have the answer. So it's receive. Same with your memories. What did I have for lunch today? Um, I remember. I don't have to um, go, well, let's see. I um, spent this much money and I consumed these foods. Therefore, it must have been McDonald's. Right, that would be a a deliberative approach towards it. That is. If I were to say, well, I'm not sure where I went, but I know I got two large cokes, and I got two quarter pounders with cheeses, and I got two Big Macs, and I got a large fries. So where does that where sells that stuff? <laughs> oh, McDonald's sells that stuff. So I must have gone to McDonald's yeah. today. That would be an NI approach to figuring out where you had lunch. <laughs> I did and, have to go back in time. <clears throat> and as I approach, you go. Where did I have lunch today? And what I did in that instance is I actually uh, started at the bagel place. I went bagel oh, place, wow. in and out McDonald's. Wow. Because we went to the bagel place to have bagels with, you know, they have bagel sandwiches, not just regular bagels. But, um, yeah. Bagel uh, sandwiches rule. But they close at 2 o'clock when they're there at 2.15. Bad luck on our part or slow leaving the house on my part more like it. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it's okay. I'm going to put some lights on here. Is that all right? Yeah, sure. Uh, so then, um, you know, we went, then we saw, well, you know, in and out right next door. <laughs> but like in the time that it took us to go, drive around the Goldsteins, Ridiculous. Um, Ridiculous. To, to realize the Goldsteins was closed three and drive around it, like three more cars all said, like, the line was pretty short for in and out when we got there. By the time we went around the gold scenes once, it was like, bum, 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 bum. I was like, okay, fuck, fuck that. Fuck <laughs> that. Is, we both said The universe this. doesn't want us to wait in this line. The 215 bagel is stale. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> that's, yeah. That's I'm going to take it I'm going to take it I know. I, I'm not that I'm a, picky. I'm, I'm not when that it comes bagel to bagels. Picky. I'll take a bag of bagels. You know, they a lot of, uh, okay, so I'm going to be a little bit hometown. You do your uh, hometown thing. Uh, in Elmont, there's this bread uh, bread bakery, and uh, they're very nice there. They give out bread for a uh, nice price, and they give it out for free sometimes, actually. And um, I just thought that when I learned that about that place, like it, like I've always you, you drive past it and you smell the bread, and you just like you. Like, it's just a part of my childhood, like, driving through that area. And then, like, meeting someone who used to go there to, like, feed himself, kind of. Like, I was like, wow, like, that's really cool of them. And I know of a bagel place, a and uh, in Franklin Square, that stays open 24 hours. And then they donate their bread to uh, a lot of places, too. So, uh, <clears throat> I wanted to also mention about the... The F N I S I thing that you'll know that the S I is is linear progression of events, right? Mm -hmm. So S I has this thing where it chunks off things as events, <laughs> definitely, and, and then things are remembered in that fashion. Whereas N I is is a process of intuiting from meanings, other meanings. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I, yeah, I have quite time. Sure, ask whatever question you want. Um, whoever asked that question about whether they could ask questions, function per slot question, sure. Um, yeah, the, th the thing I remember about SI and NI is they look, they look to different sorts of, they look to a different style of knowing, right? So, um, that. Go back and retrace your steps thing. That's SI. And repeat to yourself things and...
go over in your head again and again. That's all SI is repetition and it's going back and um, reviewing what you've already thought before and all that kind of stuff. So like um, the example I've used in the past is this time I was in the car and I had on my dashboard a sticky note telling me where I was going. Okay. Which, which was this place downtown to pick up this guy. Okay. Um, but as I was driving down the street, as typically happens after I leave the house, I'm like, where am I going? <laughs> but even though I had the sticky note on my dashboard, what did I do? Because I'm an SI user. I went, let's see, where was I going when I left the house? So I thought back to where I was at the garage and then I got up and where am I going? Oh yeah. I told that person I'm going to this place. Oh, that's right. I'm going to that place. And then I looked at the dashboard and there's a sticky note right there. So what does SI tell us? It's not S, it's not very SE uh, referencing, whereas NI is more SE referencing. And being an yeah. NI user means being aware of the obvious clues in front of you more than being an SI user does. Uh, In coming 20 years, will it be more difficult for introverts to survive because the world is full of extroverts? No, I mean, I think the world's becoming more friendly to introverts by giving them tools like this to interact with. Yeah. Yes, the kitty cat's being very adorable. This cat's yeah. been very loving today. I can't help myself right now. I, I just... I wonder that like we share a spot, she and I. She sat behind me before, pretty much being like, I'm gonna be sitting here later. Freddie, you are correct. In fact, I had very <laughs> much that experience yesterday. <laughs> my dad didn't That's like me so peeing funny. in my chamber pot. <laughs> so, okay, you need to just Chamber pots were the way of the world back in the day. <laughs> I found myself showing off a lovely little lever action with this machine is for cheese carved on the side. That's this machine is for cheese. <laughs> that's great. That is great. That's that's fantastic. Show the cat. All right. There she is, looking adorable as always. As always. Nestled in her little nook. Yeah, she fits right where my butt is. Would be. She nestles in my nook. Oh my um, gosh. <clears throat> no, no, no. I have to tell them about how I woke up the other day and you were on your side. Totally mm -hmm. like, you know, out. And she was just like. She was like laid up all like on a, on his side, like spread out like that. We were spooning. Pretty much, yeah. You were spooning, and I was yeah. like, "Oh." When Kitty spoons with me, I love it so oh, much. Oh, I love it too. It's such a nice thing to wake up to. She's a strange cat because she can be very, very <laughs> affectionate, but she's also a little spiny about it you know she wants it when she wants it and not when she doesn't mm -hmm. there are plenty of times where mommy is like, like no way <laughs> where are you going i thought you liked this stuff i still like grapefruit juice well today i made grapefruit bars mm. just use grapefruit juice that's actually that sounds pretty refreshing are you talking about frozen grapefruit bars my mom used to do that. And you know, actually my iPhone background is of grapefruits. Can't get enough grapefruit in your life. Oh, you bake them. You're talking about cookies. Ah. You're talking about the cookies. The cookies. Yeah, cats aren't constantly begging for attention. That's true. Um, the relationship between the cat and us and attention is usually I want more attention from the cat than the cat wants to give me. 
But sometimes <laughs> the cat wants more attention from me than I want to give it. That is true. That's their conflict. My con mine is when I'm sleeping in here and she's nestled next to me and I know I'm going to be like, you know, finding my spot. Right. I have to find a spot. And she just is a brick. I mean, <laughs> she's not moved. It's her place. She's you're not settled. you're not you're not rustling her enough. That's the thing. You're oh respecting God. her too much when you're it's moving around. Right. If you if you kind of near a few times, she'll move. <laughs> it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen eventually. She'll see. Enjoyable funding is enjoyable. I wonder <laughs> I wonder why you said that. Uh certainly more enjoyable than unenjoyable funding. <laughs> I went to a channel, me and the INFP. She didn't have any depths of knowledge. Your knowledge is precious, Eric. Well, thanks for out there, Vicky. I, I love the word precious. And me too. Um, horse mumbler. It's funny that you say Glenn Gould. Um, I think of uh, David Byrne when I think of INTPs. Too. He's a good choice as well. Not to totally mess up the good vibes about my asking this, but how do you know C.S. Joseph isn't an introvert? I don't. I think he's probably an ESTJ, but I don't know for sure. I never typed the guy. How do you know your mom's face isn't an introvert? Joseph House. My mom's face is an extrovert for sure. Well, what about Joseph House's mom's face? Though? It could be an innie or an Audi. Could be. Can you explain the shadow functions? Um, yeah. Uh, because, because of my problem with Needing to, well, okay, but first let me explain meow, and then let me explain meow, and then let me explain meow. The difficulty I have with narrowing something to a concise topic that, you know, accepts the the constraints of concision at the cost of um, completeness, uh, I therefore ignore the opposite, which is to embrace concision and, you know, here you go, Darla. And uh, holistic meagity meows. Um, then, I, so in other words, it, because of my tendency to, and because I'm constantly ideating out everything, trying to chase down all these threads of ideas, I'm definitely not. I'm ignoring the alternative to that, which is the concision thing. If I had, if if I were focused on how to make things concisely expressive, then I wouldn't be constantly ideating, right? So the ignoring, the the backside, your fifth slot is ignoring because of the nature of what your dominant, your dominant function is. Uh, the nature of it requires you to ignore the uh, backside of it. However, it also operates within the currency of the backside of it. So it becomes an absolute value for your, the external world for you, the fifth slot function, which is to say, for me, if somebody doesn't have any regard for the truth or holistic truth or the idea that something could be determinate, then I'm going to hold it in contempt, which means I typically have little respect for people who either are like ESFPs that don't have any regard for the meaning of words, like you know Trump, for example, or uh, ESFJs or ESTJs can also drive me a little crazy with their NI polar, right? That's an absolute value for the external world, your fifth slot function. Your sixth slot function is, is a backslide that's demonstrative, which means unlike your fifth slot, your second, your second slot function is a tool function. It requires you to back it up with something when it's insufficient on its own. And the sixth slot function is the thing it's required you to back it up with. So if you're an FE second slot person like Rachel, then you're required to back it up with demonstrations of emotion. Since you're expecting to engage people emotionally, you're expecting to read and respond to their emotions, you understand that part of that back and forth means that sometimes you have to display emotions. Actually, I don't like that. Or, oh, I'm really happy about that. So mm -hmm. that the other person can engage with you yeah. on the same kind of talking back and forth. 
Totally. For me, it's TE. So when my logic's not good enough, then I actually have to be useful in some fashion. Okay, so you mean, oh, you want this to work and do stuff? All right, fine. You know, <laughs> you know I'll, I'll do that, right? So I was like, when I worked for Kudos, my boss would ask me, well, how should we do this? And then I'd explain some ideas about how why it should be this way, and this is more correct, or blah, blah, blah. And she said, well, okay, now turn that into lesson plans. And I go, oh, okay, that's the boring part. <laughs> and then I do it. <laughs> I have this big document full of all these lesson plans. And stuff <laughs> because, you know, T.I. wasn't good enough. I couldn't just explain it to her and be right. I had to actually then make it useful. Oh, my gosh. I love it. It's so great. I, you know, it's so interesting, too, how, um, you know, so I would be, and I am NE ignoring, and I do think that ENTPs are rare, very, and um, I never met one until I was 30. So, I mean, I think that's not, and I, I think that I've come across ENTPs. I, they are rare, but um, I think I'm so ignoring, I, wa I, I believe I was so ignoring of um, an E in an ET pat, in t ENTP way um, that like, I only saw it in like, cartoon characters and stuff. So it, <clears throat> it really like, I, it, it, it's so, but um, living with you and being with you, it's like I enjoy it so much more. Um, he brings out my creative side and that's not easy for an INFJ to do. It's not easy to bring us out of our shell sometimes. Um, I want to talk about the seventh function now. Oh, Zayn Black, I will get to your question in a second. Okay. Uh, seventh function, the reason it's polar and the reason it's blind is because it's the um, other one of the same kind of your tool function. So since I'm constantly using TI as a tool function, that is to say I'm deliberating in a disinterested fashion, and when that doesn't work, I go to TE, my sixth slot function. It means that or FE, my third slot function. So in other words, I go from deliberation to interface to interface, right? That's what I have to start with. Then I go to knowledge. Okay, well, look, my, my deliberation's not working. My interface isn't working. My other interface isn't working. What's, what have worked before? I'll go to SI. And then if all of that's not working, then I'll go... Okay, well, how do I feel about this, I guess? <laughs> or, or I guess before I do that, I go, well, can I just do something? Which I hate. I hate just doing something. You know, I, I believe just doing something is, is responsible for most of the word's ills. But even, this probably comes before even, okay, well, how do I feel about it then? Like, you know. Um, yeah, I, it does. It really does, though. It, it's because T.I., is my tool function, and I'm always accustomed to using a disinterested calculus, and that the interfaces come before anything else after that, that naturally I'm almost never grading all the way down to FI, so it's completely unpracticed in me. And when I do have to process things by FI, like, um, I had a little, uh, what's the word? Dust up. I was say tiff. Tiff, yeah, quarrel or something yeah, with my it was dad. Like, like not even, it was wasn't like, a big deal, but yeah. uh, anyway, I. But when my dad and I do have dust ups of sorts like that, then it yeah. it it affects me for a couple of days. I'm trying to process how I feel about the whole thing. You know, my dad has and I have a weird relationship. He's he's ni polar. He he likes to double bind me. You know, it's like he, he wants me to do help for something. I say, okay, well, blah, 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 blah. But then he doesn't actually want to relinquish any control over anything. So it's like, okay, I don't know what to do about this. I don't know. <laughs> so, uh... I, I don't want to get involved, usually. 
But I can't lie. I'm such not a bad. I'm such like a bad liar. I really. Let me finish this thought about the seventh slot, okay? Yeah. Um, so it's blind because it's the other kind of your tool functions. Because I'm always using a disinterested calculus and never using an interested calculus. So therefore, basically, it's completely unfamiliar with, to me. Now, one thing that's kind of true about dimensions, which is I don't generally buy into this notion that things operate in dimensionality, but is that your polar function, you pretty much only understand it in real time as an experiential thing. <laughs> um, or for, for possibly if you have a metaphysical function, you only experience it real time. Um, you only experience it turn-based as a metaphysical thing. I'm not sure, but. Not well. Okay. If I'm going to be, what would you say? What Aja would you say I am? Um, yellow. Yellow? I was going to wear the, the color of that. I think you're yellow. I was going to wear the color that you deem me as. Uh, the place of least resistance is called that because um, if yes. you are very subject to critique there, you can't defend yourself in that regard. So Rachel knows, but it's a perfect, it's perfect a term for it. If you think about it, like for something like TE. What has Rachel been subject to her whole life? And she's been subject to people going, why did you do it that way? Don't you, can't you do this yourself? It's not that hard to figure out. Blah, 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 shit like that, right? All the time. And um, and she doesn't, she can't defend herself. Why? Because she's TE polar. If What happened in my last relationship with Kimberly? I was in that relationship for two and a half years with her hurting my feelings basically continually for two and a half yeah. years. And why couldn't I get out of it? Well, because to me, that's not a justification for something, <laughs> yeah, right? Right. Okay. Well, why right. should why should I leave? I could never... She's hurting my feelings. Took me two and a half years to realize that that's <laughs> a good enough reason for something. It's it's a reason that justifies shit, you know. But it was very difficult for me to understand that. I don't understand the world as that. Okay, I have to have I have to have concrete and articulable reasons as to why. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hurting my feelings is not one such reason, you know. Yeah. And I am T.E. Polar. I am INFJ. Finally, through Eric, I have been able to find my type, which was like a really huge enlightenment. Hibbly, um, no, cause and effect is, uh, is a, um, is an S.E. N.I. thing, T.E. thing of it. It's, it's the physical aspect of stuff. The metaphysical aspect of stuff is conditional. So causality is what happens when you deal with real-time experiential shit. If I dig a hole, I've caused there to be a hole, and I have to put in effort, and, you know, I have to do, I have to exchange, I have to engage in the laws of physics. But if I say, if I dig a hole, then I have to do all this shit, then... We can imagine that I dig a hole without me actually imagining it. Now I can go, okay, now let's imagine I fill the hole back in. See, now the hole's filled back in. And there's grass on top of it again. That quick and easy. <laughs> <laughs> it's so much better in the land of conditionality. <laughs> the land of causality where you have to actually do stuff. <laughs> I know. Oh, my God. Oh, did I misspell it? Did I misspell it, Winston's mom? That's funny. I misspelled uh, it. It's because I'm not reading it. I'm listening to it right now. You know, I haven't read it in years. Well, thank you, Mrs. Mom, for <laughs> explaining because it's a lot to explain in my mind. <laughs> yeah. Um, TE, well, I don't know if it likes it. What I'm saying is TE types are concerned with ordinality, causes, and effects. They're, they're the most judgy of the types because they Truth. are. I mean, the thing is, it doesn't necessarily mean they're judgy of people but it means they're they want to know why things are being done right like in other words um what's the purpose of you making all these videos eric it's something my dad might ask the only acceptable answer to him is that they have something to do with making money right any, any other answer i'm just playing around and wasting my time that's a very te frame or i'd have to have some other explanation for <sighs> It makes my back hurt. You can't fill out forms. I, you know, and I can't stop procrastinating about filling out forms. Yeah. 
But I can't either, though. I can't either. No, I, I know. I went tall. on it and I ran away from the first question. We are going to do that. We're going. We got forms <laughs> to fine. fill out. We're I have fill been out training my whole life. I have been training my whole life for this moment. <laughs> this moment I of really tea. have. <laughs> this is one moment of tea. Seriously, I really have been. My mom's gonna be proud. She'll be so proud. Good question. Why do ESFJs seem like they have better NI than ESCJs? Because they have better FE than ESCJs. That's why. Because they understand those aspects of FE that require a person to sort of pay lip service to the holistic truths of others, I guess. I don't think they really understand it, but they understand how to how to schmooze. Do well. Yeah, the good schmoozers. Hey, slot. I want. I just wanted to uh, finish the backside. Thing. Yeah, please. And then I'll go on to your four. Thing. A slot and four slot are very similar. Okay. They're the two most similar things. The difference being a slot is unconscious and four slot is conscious. And the weird thing is the only truly unconscious function that I, I can tell is the eight slot function. All the other functions seem to me very conscious. A slot is about as unconscious as it gets, which is to say Rachel's um, SI, for example, um, it's it's almost filtered through ni a lot it of is. times. Like she she goes and says, "Okay, well, it seems like it's time to eat," or um, you know, it's <laughs> I have time for a shower in the morning. Okay, I'll shower in the morning. But like, it's it's a weird it's a weird sort of um autotomic thing it is it whereas totally for me I, like totally. this afternoon i realized okay eric you need to do some si maintenance you need to go take a bath you need to make sexual relations <laughs> and um you need some fi time too it's not just si it's fi time and si and fi are linked in a weird way in terms of memory too because yeah for example the other day i was driving around i don't remember what time it was but it was hot, so it must have been the middle of the day. And um, I got in the car, and I felt this, like, summer warmth of the car. And then the smells around here and the um, the feeling of air conditioning plus super hot car plus the smells and everything, it really evoked this SI wave of childhood in me. Um, you know, like... As as a, a lot of stuff around here still does. Holla back, Alan. Hey, Alan, Brian, what's up? Um, so it's uh, I don't know if that's an FI thing or not, but I, I, the thing about it was, in addition to remem remem reminding me about the uh, sort of the place of childhood, it also reminded me how I felt when I was a child, like this feeling of of inness of the world you know rather than detachedness from it or um it's just a sense of you know because there's this quality of permanence to childhood that you you assume is going to last forever when you're a kid it seems to go so slowly it does seem to go slowly it does go slowly to me it went slow i like childhood though like um so when I was first getting into like manifesting and stuff in the secret and learning about like spirituality, one of the memories that I would go back to in my mind when they would, that they would say like, think of something positive was playing in my front yard as a kid in the summer, like my hair being like long and looking at it and being like, wow, it's really changing color. Like, cause my hair, I was born, I literally really was born dirty blonde. And um, like in the summer, my hair would t have like blonde highlights in it and be smelling the grass and seeing the bugs and like the sun just like beaming down, like brings such kid memories back, mm -hmm. like playing around the grass. Um. Another thing that happened today, there was a moment where I was 
listening to this, uh, listening to this book, and I've been listening to it all for a long time, and I just, I needed to get outside and ride around on a bicycle for a while. Mm-hmm. Now, even so, while riding around on the bicycle, I continue to listen to the book, but um, Rachel and I, um, nevertheless, both needed some SE stuff. Mm-hmm. I think we we get something different from it, though. Uh, and I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe we get the same sort of thing for it. It's, it's where we, we seem to need about the same amount of SI and the same amount of SE. Yeah, and I fucking love it. I love it. It's great. I do not feel pressured at all. And it's so nice. Can I tell you? <laughs> Seven Circle Model G2. What type are you? Um, uh, a Socionics fan. I when I say manifest, I want to use it very lightly. I it's more like <laughs> EGRND is not an INFJ though. He never was. EGRND is just a crazy ESTP with four slot in I run wild. <laughs> Uh, Winston's mom, how would you describe NI? I'm curious. NI is like a summer's breeze wafting between my legs. <laughs> I like that word wafting. NI is like a socionics channel guy coming to tell me I should learn about socionics. Oh my god. I don't know. I I, I'm thinking about it way too fucking much. Okay, so you say it's a model G2, right? Model G2. It's a model, not a taxonomy. What things are representative of processes and what things are representative of objects and what things are representative of fields and what things are representative of grammars? (laughs) It's not a model. To be honest, like, socionics people have no idea what a model is. What? <laughs> what no. Socionics calls it model G2. That is not a model. True. It's not a model. Mm-hmm. Right, but if it's not accurately called a model, then why not prefer something that is? Yeah, that is perfect. That's a good answer. It's his mom, and I know it's no, what comes next. Now, it's so funny. Like for so long, I've I've lived inside my head. Like, uh, I've never really thought about my life. You know, so this is why I want to use the word like manifest, like. So this is why I want to use the word manifest. In a very... (laughs) Isn't that so good? The way you said it, because this is why I want to. This is why I want to. Yeah, it had that sort of rock song. Manifesting. Think about manifest destiny. That's what makes it make me think of. So... Okay, so that was the term used when um, people were traveling from um, east to west, west, and they had bought the Louisiana Purchase, and it's involved in that. It was our manifest destiny to conquer the Rocky Mountains. Yes, it was, and Eric is... (laughs) To move all the the Indians away. (laughs) (laughs) Pretty much, actually. True, true. It kind of... There was a trail of tears. Your land. There was a trail of tears. What do you mean your land? Have you not heard of Manifest Destiny? (laughs) So this is why I use that term very lightly. Manifest, right? Because, okay, it's Manifest Destiny. The reason why I am in California right now is because of, you know, Manifest Destiny. But 
Who was the president who said that? <laughs> well, who was the president who said that? Fucking shit, I want... Jefferson. No, it wasn't Jefferson. Yes, it was. Who's really? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, he was. Just... No, he was involved. It was later he? than that. It was, it was later, later than, than that? that. Let's see. Who coined the term "manifest destiny"? I thought it was okay. I definitely could be wrong. John, John O'Sullivan. Sullivan. Hmm. 1845. Who, who was the president? Who was president in 1845? Was the one before Lincoln, I think. Who oh, was president in 1845? Polk. Oh, okay. Oh, Polk. Polk slash Tyler. Okay. Uh, yeah. So Polk look. Polk got shot. No, basically, Rachel, is the reason you're in California is because James K. Polk told you to go here. I went to Polk Street School, um, grammar school. Seriously, I went to Polk Street School. Is there a Discord server? No. There's a Syscord server. <laughs> you knew it was Polk? I don't know the fucking presidents. Ethan, you're smarter than me. You knew it was Polk. I didn't know it was What's Polk the MBTI all? of the apparently kid with the red hair? <laughs> Excellent question. Excellent question. What is that kid? He, I think he's ENFJ. I think that kid's ENFJ. Oh, ENFJ, yeah, definitely. He's definitely an ENFJ. I've never been on live television before, apparently. Eric Weinstein is probably an SFJ of some kind. He's a smart SFJ who did a lot of studying and got sort of right about some things. That kid is amazing. He's, he's <laughs> absolutely <laughs> amazing. <laughs> Good. I could just watch it. It's like it's like we. I want the adult to stop coming over and get trying to get the kid. <laughs> That's you know, his grandpa. I know That's because, because, because he's, like, he's gonna talk about the lottery and stuff for the Powerball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, and I just freak out. It's fantastic. <laughs> oh my god, when he talks about like going on the ride, how he gets sick, and he just freaks out. I'm like, that is so honest. Like, you gotta love it. Apparently, apparently, uh, that's why I put a link to that up on uh, Did you? on the thing here. Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad you did. Did I? Yeah. He's so cute. <laughs> yeah, he is cute. He's made me laugh in many times. I think he's ENFJ. Yeah, definitely. That's what I think. I he's mean, not. He reminds me of my brother when he was a little kid. He would go up to talk to anyone. We would lose him sometimes because he was talking to people. <laughs> it's true, Lawnmower. I'm mad about this too. We should all be mad at the Native Americans for cursing so much shit, right? So many things suffer from Native American right? curses. Right? I'm always like, why are you why are you doing that? Why you gotta be hexing people? Look, Indians. No one likes that. I'm not going to complain if you build your teepees on top of a white people graveyard. Okay? Yeah. So. <laughs> There's, so what do you think pebbles are made out of? So I was like, <laughs> why are you complaining? Because I built my house on top of your graveyard. What about the dinosaurs? Don't fair is fair. Fair is fair. Okay, he might be INFJ, <laughs> Bubble Poppy. I, I'm not sure. Uh, I don't really watch that much. You pissed me off. I I know. Jefferson was the Louisiana Purchase, I think. I don't even fucking know. Monroe Doctrine, wasn't that a part of like Min? Okay, all of this ish ended up being Manifest Destiny. Rachel, are you it's saying all that stuff you're here in California because of the Monroe Doctrine? No, I'm not. <laughs> I think you are. I think we should blame the Monroe Doctrine for your presence here. It, well, what is the I Monroe to, Doctrine? I did go to, well, I did go to Polk Street School. Oh, you did? Yeah, I did. It was, um, and it was hit by lightning as a kid. That's one of my favorite stories to tell. Was, by, her school was struck by lightning. Uh huh. And they had a lightning pole for it, which is like a yeah, Je thing. Jefferson is straight up jungle fever. Yeah. He was down. Mm -hmm, he was down. <laughs> that, that, that sounds like a... In fact, he was the one who originally said the expression, the darker the berrieth, the sweeter the juiceth. Juiceth. 
That's how he phrased it. We lost the Scythian <laughs> now in modern modern world. <laughs> Ma Monroe oh. Doctrine says all American content should stick together. Blog? Oh, that's good. I don't, I don't know what my core is, but I'll put a. I find my blog. Let's see. Isn't your? Isn't it Eric Strauss? I've definitely stalked you. Um, what's my blog called again? Oh, oh Bryce Astros. Sweet. Here's my blog. Black Lives Matter. I love that. <laughs> I love Black Lives yeah, Matter. I like Black Lives <laughs> Matter too. <sighs> I mean, it was James Monroe in 1823, huh? Okay. All James right. James Monroe. <laughs> Jefferson's not burning in hell. He Why got a reprieve he, for his good tea. He got a good. He got a reprieve for his good ideation. Look, Jefferson was great on the metaphysical plane. It was just on the physical plane he, he had and, problems. Um, he and uh, no problem. Ben Franklin with friends. I don't think you're gonna be too super thrilled with this. Mostly old stuff. I've been posted on there for a while. I should post more stuff. Okay, I accepted it was James Monroe. Okay, it was James Monroe. Oh my goodness. Now, let me so ask you this. Who also, said, did he also say go west, young man? Who said go west, young man? Did, did you say both of those things? So then who, I'm saying that. Who said James Monroe? Go west, is, young man. What I'm saying is don't. The word manifest should be used lightly because it should not be used to like, you know, like be like, hmm. oh, let's just make magic, like with a magic wand, because that shit is fake. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people misunderstand. Like, look, I, I, I'll talk about this for a second since Rachel's addressed the topic somewhat. Um, there are a lot of people out there on YouTube <laughs> who talk about manifesting shit, yeah, which like, is basically like, I will believe it so and it will become for right? everything for everything. This is not, that's not how magic works. That's just, it's just not how it works. Now, the thing is there's some of that. There's, it's like, there's an aspect of, um, thank you for the reference, Alan. There's a, there's a um, there, there's an aspect of of doing that meaning smithing creating the narratives you know weaving narratives successfully enough yeah. that the realities become but that's um, a much more involved business than manifesting it doesn't involve thinking it involves expressing and communicating and stuff <laughs> and that's not the same thing at all. That's why it's so funny when Summer says it in um, Rick and Morty, and she's like, "I'm manifest destining." She like shoots someone. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she meant it that way, though. <laughs> no, she didn't. She like, you know. <laughs> it was Kobe Bryant and ISFP. No, I think Kobe Bryant's probably an ISTP. I do too. If not, then he's an ESTP. But I think he's an ISTP. Yeah, well, look, I also have ideas about manifesting my own destiny, but it's really not about manifesting it. It's about, um, it's about SE. It's always about SE for me. It's about doing the thing, following through on the yeah. thing. And yep. but see, like, <laughs> Joe Brogan discovers penis fencing, huh? Like, there is, like, I don't just miss the, I don't just miss the idea that, um, you know, people have to be careful with their thoughts. Um, it's just that, like, there are scam artists out there, just like with everything else. And uh, people want to hear, people want to hear an easy, simple solution. Yeah, of course. Oh, it's just your attitude. It's just your. Blah, blah, blah. The thing is, there is just because all of these stories we tell each other about about how to be what what's a good idea what's a bad idea what's truth what's um spirituality all these sort of things they're part of a larger story but people tend to 
being very fixated on their part of the story. Explain metaphysics yeah. versus physics. Good question. That is. So um, physics explains the mechanics of a system. Metaphysics explains the mechanics of the mechanics. Mm -hmm. So, um, for example, if I'm talking about physics, I might say this thing falls at a rate of meow feet per second per second or accelerates at a, feet, a rate of meow feet per second per second. Um, that's a reference to physics. If I were to speak about what that kind of knowledge is, how language is used there to convey meaning or some sort of critique of the, the approach towards understanding a given set of information. So for example, if I were to say, okay, well that may be the case, but we don't need that piece of information because we're trying to analyze this for some other quality than that. then that would be an example of pulling up from the physics up to the metaphysics. And then you can go back to the physics and say, okay, well, actually we need to address this question. It's not falling, it's rolling on a surface with friction. Okay, so um, uh, metaphysics in general is a communicative physics. It's the, it's the physics of language, okay? So um, you cannot understand any kind of metaphysical, uh, any, any distinction between physics and metaphysics without distinguishing between language-based, meaning-based stuff, turn-based stuff, and experiential stuff, real-time stuff. Yeah, because words you can't touch. You got that, people? You can't touch words. Nope. can't touch words. Like, you could write them and then, then touch them. But this is me thinking outside of the box. How come I hear people say he has good N-I, he has good N-E, he has good T, he has good F-E, he has good F-E, has good F-E, has good F-E, people say it's good F-I. Um, the reason is because F-I is uh, the least de demonstrable function, really. Um, what what I mean by that is it's not it's not something that other people generally use. It's something that somebody particularly uses. So you might say that I find Rachel's mm -hmm. F-I useful to me, but her F-I is not useful to anybody else because it's not directed at anybody else, right? Yeah, I would say just like look for FI Dom um, people like they create like music and just like look at FI Dom examples in media and you will get a sense of what someone would say when they say, oh, he's got good FI. Well, look, even SI, even SI, we can talk about in terms of demonstrating it in some way, right? It's an introverted function. NI, we can talk about demonstrating it in some way because um, SI has a pool of memories to draw from. And we can say, for example, test you, say, well, what do you do today? Give me a series of small events. Um and then NI, we can test it by the Rhone Associations test. Seems to be a pretty damn good NI test, actually. I'm surprised by it, but I've had multiple examples where the, uh, an INFJ, for example, can do the remote associations test well, but can't do Inky Pinky well. And this is true for ENFJ as well. I had a couple of verifications of this recently. Anyway, um, so we can test those things in a way that you can't really test FI because it's about what's important to you in the particular, and it doesn't link to external stuff. It's not there to be d demonstrated, although it sometimes gets demonstrated. If I'm crying to you, obviously I'm demonstrating something. Yeah, I've but, been showing FI with Kitty on Instagram. Okay, so well, he, here's another reason why it's a it's a silly question, a silly thing to say. You have good FI. So I've been listening to this book all day long, okay? And if Rachel's been watching me occasionally, she probably, if she anytime she looks over, she probably can tell what's happening in the book, you know? Yeah. Some of the time I'm crying, some of the time I'm laughing, mm -hmm. some of the time I'm going like this, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. It's, in other words, it's successfully um, pulling my emotional strings. Now, do I, that mean I have good FI? Well, what does that even mean? 
right? It doesn't mean anything. It's so it's so variable. I, do yeah. I do I have Greg. feelings? Talk yes, about Greg. I have feelings. I have laughter and I have crying and I have Ugh. suspense. And but is that good? I mean, what do you mean? It's like it's just it's just what it is. It's your feelings. It's not it's not meaningful to talk about them in terms of good or bad. Now no. you could say I have bad fi. I'm referencing to my last relationship. Why? Because I put up with getting my feelings hurt for a long time before getting away from that. So that's bad FI, right? It means I'm not protecting my own yeah. feelings well enough. Maybe some of those critiques were legitimate, right? Maybe let's pretend somebody critiques you a lot and every critique they make is legitimate. It doesn't matter. Criticism kills love. And somebody with good FI is going to not want to be around somebody who's critiquing them all the time, yeah. whether the critiques are justified or not. Somebody with very bad FI like me is going to say, well, if, if their justifications are adequate for critiquing me, then my duty is to internalize the critique and change my behavior. What happened in that relationship is I, I did that with all legitimate critiques, but there were a bunch of illegitimate critiques mixed in in the middle some of which I didn't know how to respond to that were critiques about things that weren't, you couldn't solve, you know? So, and I didn't get the idea that the problem here was not me being critiquable. It was her insisting on constantly critiquing. So that would be an example of good or bad FI, right? But you can much more easily demonstrate bad FI than good. Good FI would be, he, she didn't stay with that person for very long. Rachel's FI is better than mine. She stayed with her um, BPD person for a few, how many months? Six months? A year? Yeah, like something like that. Like nine months. Total. Nine months. Nine yeah. months. Or as I say, with mine, two and, two and a half years. Is paradox yeah, just a failure really of language to accurately model the thing we're just talking about? No, paradox is a, uh, well, yeah, you could, you could say that. I mean, paradox is a reality of grammar and diction. So the nature of words and the nature of grammar make it such that you can create apparent contradictions with language. I also um, want to say that um, my FI is really shit too, um, because I've I was lucky, honestly, that I learned value and what I want. Um, and how to be stronger in myself over the years because I could have stayed in that a lot longer too. Because I, I think because you're you are countervalued, FI, right? So, look, Autonomous Media, I'm gonna have to agree with you here. I also want the USSR back, <laughs> <laughs> I want the Soviet Union as an enemy. No, I don't want Stalin back. <laughs> I want like Gorbachev era. Oh my gosh. Gorbachev so era. 90s, that's 80s. 80s. That's 80s. 80s. I, I remember want, it. I, I remember want Gorbachev, Gorbachev oh, his, era. Didn't he have a, a birthmark? Yeah, on he had his... a big red thing on Yeah. His <laughs> my, my grandma used to talk BT dub, your thumbnail for this live is G O A L S. I don't know what that means, but I'll take it. I assume it's good. Goals. I. Aw, oh, thanks, Lamar. I think it was a cute one. Ooh, really cute. So I want to say that I am honored to be a yellow uh, Aja. Now, would that be an or a? Uh, well, a because yellow. What's the difference between paradox and contradiction? And paradox is apparent contradiction, or is contradiction is contradiction. Well, paradox can occur with. Okay. So, okay, so a paradox, it would be something like um, if, if a tree falls in the forest and no one's around to hear it, does it make a sound? In that, the reason it's paradoxical is because it has contradictory premises. So people don't understand it as having contradictory premises because they're not explicitly made. The, the real argument is this. One, a tree is observed to fall in the forest. Two, a tree is unobserved falling in the forest. The, the, tree, the tree that has been observed to fall in the forest is unobserved. Three, doesn't make a sound, you know, which is a question. So basically it turns into an argument you say, ergo, 
it makes a sound or it doesn't make a sound, right? Um, the problem is, therefore, it has contradictory premises. Now, anytime you have contradictory premises, you can make a, any logical conclusion. So if I say, um, there are apples, and I say there, it is not the case that there are apples, and those are my two premises, then I can conclude anything and have it be logically valid if I accept the two contradictory premises as logically valid. The reason for this is because of a um, rule of inference called uh, addition, which is to say, if I say this is a lighter and that's true, then this is a lighter or this is a banana is also true. <laughs> that's all addition means. I can just add, add an or to it, okay? So the problem with having contradictory premises is if you have contradictory premises, you can say, this is a lighter, and it is not the case that this is a lighter. Now, you have step one. This is a lighter. Either this is a lighter, or this is an alien. Step two. I already have it in another place. This is not a lighter. Therefore, I can el eliminate this being a lighter as a possibility, which leaves me concluding validly that this is an alien. That's why anytime you have contradictory premises, you can logically validly conclude anything but no conclusion is sound using that methodology. So in other words, most paradoxes are simply examples of tricks of language that turn out to be a fallacy of some sort, some sort of fallacious reasoning you can describe and explain like I just did with the contradictory premises to why it's fallacious. And um, that's why we have, that's why there are things called fallacies. Most times people talk about a paradox, it's just a fallacy. If I say, um, this uh, this fog bank is heavy, therefore it must weigh a lot. You might call that a paradox. It's just an equivocation fallacy. I'm using the word heavy in two different ways. Does that answer your um, paradox question? I think that was very well said, actually. Thanks. I think if you want a visual um, thing for a paradox, when we were watching Inception, mm -hmm. they, he was talking about paradoxes at the same time. As he was using architecture, remember because oh, the yeah, stairs because, yeah, right. that lead nowhere are a paradox, right? Visually, can, right. In other words, in that case, it's an optical illusion of something that continues to go up and never seems to go, never seems to reach the top. And it seems to, it goes back to the bottom again and keeps going up, right? No, it's just, it like like yeah, it looks like it's going to keep going, but it actually stops. That's. Um, a paradox. The number eight, they say, is um, paradoxical because of its shape. Do I assume there are apples? Mm. <laughs> is paradox of the form P if and only if not P? which in logic symbols eventually leads to true and false equals false contradiction has the same logical form, true and false which equals false. Um, well, you know, P if and only if not P is the same thing as if P then not P and if not P then P, which converts to um, P and not P and P and not P, which converts to two sets of contradictory premises. So if you if you do the logic break it down, if you convert the if and only if to two condition the biconditional to two conditionals, then each conditional to a set of ands, which you can and or ors depending on how you structure it, um, then you get down to contradictory premises again. This is the same thing. Also yellow. Thinking about polar functions, we have an extreme expression of like INTPs and INFPs are an extreme expression of SC where they completely dig in their heels about their cause. It's not even that. They completely dig in their heels with what I would call stubborn escapism. They didn't even recognize it as such. That's how that's how SC polar they are. At least I recognize my stubborn escapism as stubborn escapism. Not that, that doesn't mean any good. Scott. 
skinny women marrying fat men and vice versa. What's that? Is there a word for that? I don't know. <laughs> is there some sort of word for that? It's like a certain okay. fetish or something? Like <laughs> reverse chubophilia Chubba, reverse or something? <laughs> reverse chubophilia is a good... Uh, or no. Uh, you know, I'm not sapiosexual. I'm reverse chubbiosexual. I have to ask you. What odds are you? Um, what odds am I? I'm probably, probably gray. Yeah. Would the law of conservation be a paradox or a contradiction because the state's energy can either be created or destroyed? But clearly, uh, that can't be. It can't fully be true because we exist. Well, I mean, I guess what you'd say is that uh, that I mean, we're not creating new energy when we create new people. That it's a conversion of of energy into another form. But um, if, in fact, the law of conservation, which states energy can either be created or destroyed. Uh, well, I mean, it's only paradoxical if you assume that which exists must have been created, right? So if that which exists has always existed and always will exist and has no causal um, origins or whatever, no, no link to causality, if it's emergent rather than um, effective, you know, an effect of something, then that's not necessarily the case. I mean, it depends what kind of assumptions you want to bring into the question of of what comprises a contradiction. What what comprises falsifying the the statement that energy can either be created or destroyed? You're saying that our existence falsifies that statement. I'm not sure it does, and you'd have to explain what your criterion is that that meets more precisely. Rachel, you watch FJ, right? Did you take the animal within quiz? What did you get if you did? Honestly, is he in black? I tried to take the animal quiz, but it was so busy because of his suggestion that I couldn't load it. So I didn't get to take the quiz, but I already know. I'm a shark. I My, my first spirit animal that I've ever dis discovered about myself that came to me intuitively was shark. Mm. Um, he has, he got owl, right? I'm a platypus. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love plat platypi. Pi 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 <laughs> we were talking about pudding today, guys. Yeah, it's a good, good point. Um, I just made the point today and I think Rachel agrees with it, that if you're going to eat pudding, you really need to eat tapioca pudding because it's basically your only opportunity to eat tapioca. Unless you have bobas, but that doesn't even taste like tapioca. Ew. And they're gross. <laughs> no, that Nobody, who count. likes bobas? Who likes those little INFPs, balls in there? INTJs. INTJs. I've met INTJs who like boba. Balls Taiwanese 16 year olds. That's who likes boba. <laughs> Taiwanese 16 year olds. Um, you're right. But if you are going to eat pudding, eat tapioca pudding, for mm -hmm. God's sakes. It's so if good. If you're going to have a flavor like chocolate or vanilla or some other flavor, then why you eat pudding? Get Don't get pudding. Get ice cream or something, right? <laughs> if you're going to have pudding. If they, and they have tapioca on the menu, the, well, you got to get it. The point is, there's any other flavor you're going to get, you're going to prefer it in a non-pudding form. Okay. Okay, but I have to. Love. I love chocolate, and like, there's something about the. There's a different. Di Even that, would you prefer chocolate mousse? Never. Ew, fuck never. You don't like chocolate mousse? No, I wouldn't prefer it. Over chocolate pudding? No, chocolate pudding over chocolate mousse, yes. Definitely. Fuck what it. about chocolate ice cream over chocolate pudding? What do you prefer? Oh, that's troubling. Ice cream. Yeah. See, the thing is, 
But what if it were tapioca ice cream or tapioca pudding? I don't pudding? fucking want tapioca. I only want it as a pudding. Only the pudding. We agree. We agree. I'm just saying that if there's not the option for tapioca on the menu, then I go for chocolate pudding if I'm in the mood for pudding. Okay. If energy can't be created, then why and how can there be an existence of reality? Okay, well, the thing about it is you're saying that in order for this reality to be, then energy must have been created, right? You're not critiquing it in the status quo. You're not saying in the status quo, I create new energy when I'm yeah. We only create metaphysically stuff like that. Other than, uh, in the physical world, we only move shit around. We don't create stuff. I want to, um, also, horse mumbler one, I want to say that I wasn't trying to bully the word manifest destiny. I wasn't trying to bully the word manifest at all. Um, because I definitely uh, believe in... When, Bullying a word? Yeah. <laughs> I, I hope I wasn't. Uh, I hope not either. Those words' feelings are really at stake here. Does that make them physical or metaphysical? <laughs> the question assumes the cosmos is a closed system, it's an open system. It's easy. I like. Um, I have a thing about. I'm a chocolate person. All right. Go ahead. Sorry. So I prefer if I'm gonna have yo. Chocolate brownie mix, I'm a big fan of. That's when I'm desperate. When I'm when we didn't have anything in the house, and uh, the only thing really that was like sweet was like chocolate brownie mix. I would, and I was vegan. I would mix oil with the um, chocolate brownie mix. So good, I. I'm gross. I'm so gross. Otter and Amelia, <laughs> Newton's not wrong. He's just right within his frame, okay, and not appropriately applied outside of his frame. Horse Mumbler, good point about the Yorkshire pudding. It's the only other flavor of pudding you should get, either either tapioca or Yorkshire. I'll concede the point. But what is Yorkshire? Pudding. It's not pudding at all. It's some bread thing. Ew, I'm not having that. <laughs> I'm having tapioca pudding, though, because that's delicious. Sure. Sure. Actually, I'm not really sure. It's been a really long time since I've had it. Big bang or bust? Brian Cranston. I can't believe I missed the last big bang. I better not miss the next oh my one. God, I, I am frustrated. Just missed it. <laughs> yeah, because that show wasn't up for 10 years or whatever. No, I'm talking about the actual Big Bang. <coughs> oh. I am so frustrated with myself for missing the Big Bang. I had heard about it. I had heard that the universe was going to start and everything in a big explosion. But I was busy getting tapioca pudding. <laughs> you should have put that on your Facebook. Update it. Like, <laughs> One of my life that, Yeah. Just missed the big bang. <laughs> just, just missed it. Was unfortunately distracted at a, at a pudding shop during the big bang. Yes. I was yes. So anyway. I was sitting there. I was eating my tapioca pudding, and I was like, "Oh shit! It's five oh five. I missed the big bang." I heard it. I heard it. It was big. It was like boom, but more of a bang sound. <laughs> I want my biography to say that I survived Y2K. <laughs> yeah, I survived Y2K. <laughs> You're using that cab, babe. The Y2K, the Y2K <laughs> disaster. Is the threat really over? <laughs> Have we been premature <laughs> and just missing the Y2K threat? Okay, all right. They want us to not kid around anymore. Still, Eric, 
See, that's FI. That's good FI right there. You're like, all right, around with the kidding. I have a question, Eric. Whom should the INFP marry for love? Probably another INFP. It seems like they're the only people who could really. You said you said ESTJ. Yeah, well, I mean that's a duel, but um, I mean I wouldn't want to marry an ESTJ. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe that's just me. I know? think, um, yeah. All I can tell you about time, B-Bay, is it's running short, so you better get busy. Got a lot of shit to do before you die. The last battle's coming. The Dark One's breaking out of his prison. The seals are breaking. <laughs> stop, 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 stop. <laughs> we got to meet at Shagar Logos for... Her. <laughs> You know, bring your hair mark sword and we're going to battle. I think when I come back, I come, I'm coming back as an ISFJ because it's only just a little bit different for me. It's different. It's definitely different, but like, it's like. The toxic. wheel weaves as the wheel wills, Virgil. Exactly. The wheel weaves as the wheel wills. You're right. I know. We are all just nodes in the pattern. We don't have any say in how our lives proceed. But aren't the Aja some of the people who are weaving that wheel? No, it's just it's just the the the, the wheel runs mostly on Sidene and Sidar. Oh. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. People yeah. access that to do stuff, magical stuff, but what that really is is the energy of the wheel. The wheel of time. I'm learning. Let me tell you something. If you're stuck in that wheel of time, you don't want to be Luz Theron Kinslayer. What does he do? <laughs> he ends up killing everybody he loves. I that's got to be a pretty big bummer. Wow, that is. I'm thinking that's a pretty big bummer. After you've done yeah. that, and you, you were kind of in a daze, and you kill everybody you love, and you go, oh, shit. Did I kill all you people? <laughs> what was I doing? What was I thinking? I was confused. I was wondering if you were going to be watermelon. <laughs> okay. Well, Rathor Vicky, that's your opinion. It's, oh. <laughs> I, I don't know what synastry is. Synastry is the combination of looking at two charts. See if they match and up. And to see if they match up. Well, I do think that uh, cognitive functions are... A uh, a more reliable base to say yeah. whether there's a base likelihood of, of compatibility, but there are a lot of particular factors in terms of that. Like Rachel and I are compatible for a lot of reasons, yeah. Besides just being INFJ and ENTP, yeah. and I can very easily conceive of myself being with an INFJ with whom I wasn't compatible. I don't think that Rachel's you know replaceable with any old INFJ. Yeah. Now it so happens. That um, she's done a fair amount of like astrology chart comparison mm -hmm. things, right? Most of those have been pretty positive, but some of them have been negative. And the thing I would say is, is that's the problem with it. Um, and yeah. with potentially the same problem with cognitive functions is that there's no consensus on what right. it means. There shouldn't be the same problem with cognitive functions is the difference. Because astrology is an NI thing. It doesn't mean we should dismiss it entirely. It just means it's not reducible. Cognitive functions, when probably understood, are reducible. Now, that means they're less complete an understanding of something, but it also means they're more explainable and more defensible. Yeah. It doesn't mean it's more correct. Right. See, the thing is, I have studied astrology since I was probably the age of eight. I studied my sun sign a lot because my grandma uh, had a book on astrology. So I read about my sun sign a lot and I was like, oh, wow. Yeah, that sounds, you know, a little bit like me, but not totally. And then I totally dismissed it when I was a teen because I was like, ew, these, these horoscopes, the daily, I would read the daily horoscopes, you know. Um, not very the, reliable. Yeah, and I, I hate that. I, I, they're not. For some people, they were, though. 
I don't know. It just never really fit for me. Um, so I dismissed it. Then I wanted to know more about it because I was like, hey, you advertise as an astrologer. I don't know why I don't match with my sun sign. You tell me why. So he was like, okay, give me your date of birth and the time that you were born with the location of where you were born and I'll give you your birth chart. And he, um, he explained it to me how I, how their birth chart is broken up into different things and their psychology behind different aspects and stuff. The thing is that, um, it's definitely its own language for sure. Cause there's like, um, visual aids that go along with the words. Plus there's also math involved because they use time. Like there's literally like minutes involved. Um, which it gets down to some real like crazy shit. Like you could go way too deep. Like I did go way too deep. And um, I experienced, I used astrology as a metric for 10 years straight. And um, honestly, it's fun to get to like know yourself, but it's not Bible. And like, there's a lot of variations and you should not live based on just your astrology. Now, I really don't think you should dismiss it because if you like, I, I think it should be used for entertainment. Like, I don't know, it's fun. It's, it, it truly is entertainment. Um, it's funny to apply things and be like, oh, well, that's cool. You know, that sounds a little bit like me. But, you know, sometimes I would be so um, tied up in the meanings of things. And a lot of it can be negative. Like, not all of it's positive. So I would get hooked on the, like, negative aspects of my, like, birth chart. And I'd be like how can I reconcile with this? And I did, you know, I just did. I was like, whatever, you know, they're going to say that this this, that, and this, you know what? I'm going to be the punching bag then. That's fine. I'll take it. Um, so, so now, um, so with experimenting with it for such a long time, I really do find it as entertaining and I do use it as a metric, um, for us and, Shit's good. Uh, astrology for an INFJ is kind of like live streaming for me. Um, it's a good thing, and it can also be a form of stubbornness in your dominant function when misapplied. So it's like I have been for quite a long time now indulging in my dominant function without constraining it adequately with NI, which is to say I just make a bunch of these sort of engagement, fun, mm -hmm. ideational mm -hmm. things. And I don't spend a lot of time making anything purposely. Exactly. I have a, uh, thank you, Rath or Vicky. I'm <laughs> glad to hear it. Um, I have a, a plan going forward here next few days to hopefully try to follow through on making some basic cognitive function videos, about 10 minutes long, explain some basic topics and having Rachel help me keep them constrained. You know, it's a, it's a modest plan. So it's, it's conceivable to do. Yeah. And uh, and that's something that I have to do to bring my any in check sure. a little bit because left to my own devices, I can just sit in extrovert intuition land indefinitely. I can just listen to my book and live stream I mean, and, you know. Yeah, and I can, you know. And so it's what I call stubborn. <laughs> Me too. Stubborn self-indulgence. You know, st stubborn, uh, stubborn escapism. Aww. Um, Winston's mom, thank you for uh, explaining it is. Uh, so applying when they say um, <clears throat> <laughs> applying. 
I'm, but, with, I'm with you, Running Fox. I like that one too. This is the this is the largest car I could afford. Do you find something comical about me emerging from this small vehicle? <laughs> That's funny. Now, now you experience it. Ha ha. Say ha ha to him. <laughs> That's right. Oh my god. That was great. Yeah, that was a great episode. With the very tall guy in the little car. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry I interrupted no, you. No, you're fine. So applying is the is when the um gosh. Okay. So the two planets are in the sky. Um, for a conjunction, they're in the same sign. And these planets, so this is um, the sun, this is Venus. They're getting closer together. That's applying. Um, if they're in like 26 degrees, close to 30 to change, um, they're separating. Well, look, Beth or Rather, Vicky, here's an MBTI explanation for you. Um, as an INFP, you understand yourself as something that needs to be understood a lot. Your your dominant function is FI, which means basically introspection and understanding what's important to you and stuff. But your sixth thought function is NI, which means you're countervaluing it. You don't like holistic solutions that aren't reducible and that just lead you to... Um, that, that it, attempt to constrain your extroverted intuition. So it's like the reason you probably find this more gratifying is it's not an NI answer exactly, although it sort of is. It's, it's an answer that says you're likely, based on what you prioritize and value, to countervalue some other things. And so it's like astrology is a textbook NI explanation. It's irreducible. It doesn't have an external reference point. So it's not uh, unlike this. I can so say... Hard. I can say, well, here's a here's the total data set. Here's how we're taxonomy in it, and here's why uh, the the functions are these four kind of functions. Blah, 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 blah. Whereas the plan the astrology thing links to an external data point, namely the planets, but there's no explanation as to why. So, in other words, there's there's nothing implicit in the mechanics of astrology to say that if this planet and this planet are aligned here, the following force vector is implemented, you know, it, which cognitive functions have that aspect of the explanation right. which makes them different kinds of explanations. It's, it's, it's ever changing is how I would put it. I mean, they talk about the 13th sign. The truth is that I'm totally up for it. Like, I think that why the hell not have a 13th sign? Because who the hell cares at this point? Well, also, I decided I'm going to have a 14th sign. <laughs> See? It's just for me. Nobody else gets Ooh, to be this Ooh, what, where'd you going to be? Um, <coughs> I'm going to be Kansas Scorpius. Kansas Scorpius. That's my that's my sign. <laughs> Kansas Scorpius. You look like one. I don't know. I have that. I have that quintessential Kansas Scorpius or Scorpius. Gay Catarius. Gay Catarius. <laughs> Could Putin be an ISTJ? I'm pretty sure Putin's an ISTP. He looks like an ISTP. Okay, well, the, right. Look, a lot of probably, ISTPs are bald. Those relationships are said to correlate, correct. But what I'm saying is <laughs> there's no... For example, if I say the reason why I'm ignoring NI is because my nature is to ideate in the following fashion, and that natively runs inversely proportional to concision. So um, because I want to explain everything... And probably want to say it in multiple different ways to make sure it's understood. I am necessarily going to counter prioritize mm -hmm. saying things as neatly and concisely as I can and instead prioritize explaining them more fully. You can't do both because they are inversely proportional to each other. In contrast, it's not necessarily the case that because this planet and this planet mean that I'm more 
social that they don't also mean that I'm um, I'm more aggressive or something, right? It's like there's no there's no inherent mechanical relationship between the things. It's it's a, the correlations are attributed to a, a external data set, but that doesn't make it um, explanatory in a way that is like a model. For example, it doesn't break it down into objects, fields, and vectors like a model would. The bong sign, bongaterius. <laughs> I'm a bongaterius. I might be a bongaterius. The bong sign. You were also a chain smoker. <laughs> Congratulations, Roth or Piggy. You and me both. I've become quite the chain smoker lately. <laughs> I think I'm about ready to wrap this up. Yeah. How about you? I'm thirsty mm, I'll as hell. Take my, uh, vacations. I'm gonna go get a bottle of water. Okay. All right. Thank you all for being here. We enjoy your company. Yeah. Don't forget to eat plenty of cheese. Plenty. This machine is made for cheese. <laughs>